Welcome to my lecture online. So what causes quasars to be quasars? We already know that it requires a supermassive black hole that is active. But then the question is, what makes those super black holes active inside quasars? And the key was this curve right here that we showed you last time, where on the vertical axis, it is number of quasars. And on the horizontal axis is time, and this means time back in time from present to the Big Bang in the very beginning. And so when you look at this curve, the vast majority of quasars existed not long after the Big Bang. Now notice there were no quasars immediately after the Big Bang because immediately after the Big Bang, there, were not, there weren't any stars, there weren't any galaxies, so there couldn't be any quasars. But then galaxy formation started, and as soon as galaxy formation started, quasars began to happen. The reason is quasars are fed by those supermassive, or not fed, but they're fueled, or they're, the engine of the quasars is a supermassive mass, black hole that's active. And the only way that a supermassive hole, black hole can be active is when material is close enough to be grabbed. And so when we think about the idea of what the universe was like at the beginning, it was a lot smaller in volume. Matter of fact, right after what we call decoupling, when the radiation was free to flow throughout the universe, and the universe initially was pitch black and there were no stars and no galaxies, when stars began to form, the universe was extremely small compared to today. The volume of the universe back then was only about one billionth the volume today. So you can imagine that everything was much closer together, galaxies were much closer together, and in general, galaxies were much smaller. There were about 200 trillion galaxies in the universe. Oh, I'll take that back. About 2 trillion, I'm thinking about today. So back then, there were about 2 trillion galaxies in the universe. Well, how do we know that? Well, we know that because the Hubble telescope. The first big picture that we took with it was what we call the Hubble Deep Field, which made us realize that was today over 100 billion galaxies in the universe. By now, the count is around 200 billion today in the visible portion of the universe. But back then, there were may, way more galaxies that were smaller, and the way we know that is because we took pictures with the Hubble Space Telescope that were known as the, uh, what do we call it, the ultra deep field picture and the extreme deep field picture. In other words, we looked as far back in time as possible. When the recession velocities were near the speed of light, we counted as many galaxies as we could in a small portion of space, and then we averaged that out over all of the universe, and we realized there were about 2 trillion galaxies. Each picture contained well over 10,000 galaxies on a small little spot in space. So, what happened, they were all close together, they all, there were a lot of them collided with each other, and from the smaller galaxies through many collisions, larger galaxies were formed. Now what happens when two galaxies collide and one of them has a black hole at the center, notice as they pass through each other, and remember that galaxies when they collide it's not like a boom like this, like two billiard balls. The stars are so far apart from one another that galaxies by and large pass through each other. But as they pass through each other, so much material of the one galaxy will pass the black hole of the other galaxy that that, galaxy, that, that black hole comes, becomes active and begins to grab whatever material happens to float by in the vicinity. And so what we realize is that quasars are really galaxies in the process of colliding. Now remember how difficult it was to actually see the galaxy because of the glare of the active black hole. But with special techniques, we've been able to figure out what's going on there, and we've been able to get the light from the galaxy. Now we realize that whenever we saw a quasar, we actually saw two galaxies in the process of colliding. First we saw one, then we saw another, then we saw another, and pretty soon we realized the more we started peering into what was happening inside a quasar and in the galaxy of the quasar, it was actually two galaxies in the process of colliding. Which means at the very beginning, galaxy collisions were very common. Whenever collisions happened between two galaxies and one or both had a black hole, it would create an activity that caused a quasar to exist. And then as more and more galaxies merged and they became larger, and as the universe expanded, the space between galaxies began to increase, and less and less and less quasars existed, and eventually to the point now where galaxies are so far apart, 
and the universe has now expanded to such an extent that galaxy collisions are relatively, relatively rare. Now that said, our own Milky Way galaxy and our neighbor the Andromeda galaxy will one day collide. And yes, in our galaxy we have a supermassive black hole of several million times the mass of the Sun, and when the two galaxies collide, our own Milky Way galaxy will become a quasar, at least the big black hole at the center will produce a quasar. So, quasars will still happen in the future, although much more rare than they happened in the past. We're talking about tens of thousands at the same time colliding. Well, now it's a rarity when we see a quasar in the universe today. So, that is what fuels quasars. It's the actual collision of galaxies where one or both of the galaxies contains a black hole that causes the black hole to become active. And that's the secret that we figured out from this very famous graph. And that is how it's done. So when you talk about the visible galaxy, why are the other parts not visible? The light hasn't reached us? Or... So you're asking me about the visible galaxy. I'm actually talking about the visible universe. Oh, I mean the universe. Yes, right? yes. So the reason why part of the universe are not visible to us, because they're so far away, that the light hasn't been able to reach us yet. So if we stick around for another million years, will we see more of the universe? We see a little bit more of the universe, that's right. So the, the expansion is not going to outpace the light? The expansion is outpacing our ability to see it. So there's parts of the universe that will always move away from us faster than we can ever see it. Speed of light? There, so that's the interesting part. So remember that it's not the galaxies that are moving, but that space that's expanding. So as space is expanding, locally there's very little movement and speed. So if you think about it this way, if you have a big, well, I guess it's a big galaxy, uh, universe, right? So we have this big universe, and as, as galaxies are moving apart from each other, very slowly, because for one megaparsec they're only moving at 70 kilometers per second. But then if you go farther and farther away, as there's more and more space in between, the potential is that those galaxies are moving away from us faster than the speed of light. They have to, because there's so much space in between that they are going faster. But it's not violating the, the speed of light, because they're moving slowly relative to space, or not at all relative to space. So you can only violate the speed of light, if you go faster than speed of light, if you go through space faster than speed of light, but they're not moving through space, space is expanding itself. I hear you right when you say there was 10 billion galaxies in the beginning? Uh, I made a mistake when you, when you asked me. Um, I said there were 200 trillion galaxies, there's only 2 trillion galaxies at the beginning, and now it's down to about 200 billion galaxies. So it went from about 2 trillion to about 200 billion, over the last 13 billion years. Where's the missing ones? They collided, no, they collided and joined together. So that's why today we have many large galaxies where back then most of them were all small galaxies. And when are we gonna collide with uh, Andromeda? I think the estimate is about one to one and a half billion years from now. So don't stay up for it. You're not gonna see it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And it would be a very, very slow event. The event would take many, many, many millions of years, tens of millions of years, hundreds of millions of years. It would be a very, very slow event. Kind of boring. Kind of like watching paint dry. Or some TV shows. Or some TV shows. <laughs>